the largest circle that can be inscribed within a semicircle is easy to see once I help you visualize it. If you take the center of that semicircle, let's call the radius of the semicircle the larger half circle, R. By definition, it's the same distance from the center to any point on the semicircle, including this point at the very top. Now that should show you already that the circle you're going to inscribe, let's say that this circle has a radius of little r, you have one radius to get from the center of that circle to the top and one radius to get from the center of that circle to the bottom. So the radius of the circle that can be inscribed is half of the radius of the semicircle. That's it. It's because this is an R and this is an R and it corresponds, those two things together add up to give you big R. Now, you might be curious about what percent of the semicircle is occupied. You're going to need to calculate the area of the small whole circle and divide it by the area of the semicircle to get a fraction or a decimal or whatever. Now, the area of the, the whole circle here is pi little r squared. And because we know that little r is half of big R, we can replace r with that. So this is the radius of the small circle, pi r squared, divided by the area of the semicircle. The semicircle is pi r squared as well, but you're using big R as your radius. And because it's a semicircle, you're only using a half of that. So algebraically, you end up with something like this. Now a bunch of canceling happens here. These pi's cancel because there's one on top and one on bottom. This r squared cancels with that r squared. And the one half on top becomes one quarter. So you end up with one quarter divided by a half. When you do that on your calculator, you get a half or 50%, which means that exactly half of this semicircle is occupied by that circle inscribed in it. Not too bad, pretty fun, best of luck.